Good morning. Good to be with you today as we continue in our study of John's Gospel. Last week we were introduced to John the Baptist who came to testify to the truth. And today I'd like to pick up in the 19th verse of still in this first chapter where the Jews have been a little bit concerned now about John the Baptist. He's talking to the people about the coming Messiah. Uh, he is really infringing on the Jews' territory. And so they've sent a delegation uh, of leaders to talk to John and find out what's going on. So as we pick up in this 19th verse, it says, Now, this was John's testimony when the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and Levite to ask him who he was. You know, by what authority are you saying what you're saying? Who are you? They asked him, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? No, he says. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us what do you say about yourself? And so John replies, I am the voice of one calling in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord. And it continues in verse 26 by saying, I baptized with water, John replied, but among you stands one who you do not know. He is the one who comes after me the thongs of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. So John is leading in now to his testimony about, about Jesus. And then it says in verse uh, 32, Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not know him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me. I have seen and testify that this is the Son of God. So the Jews were curious about not only who John is and, and, and what he is testifying about, but who it is that he is testifying about. And so John tells them then, I'm the one that was sent to pave the way, to make the way for, to testify to the truth of the coming Messiah. And so he, when he said, I have come, it is very often for his listeners uh, to hear rather than a testimony about a person. And then in verse 35, and this is the fourth day after uh, this uh, arrival of John, the next day John was there again with two of his disciples. And this is the first time that we learn that John the Baptist has disciples. And we're seeing a transition now from uh, John's testimony to the ministry and testimony of Jesus. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the Lamb of God. Uh, this was said for the disciples' benefit, those that were with, uh, with John. In verse 37, when the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. So these two disciples, one would be Andrew, the other one is not identified, turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, what do you want? Or it could mean, uh, what are you seeking in life? What is it that you want from following me? And during that time, uh, rabbis, teachers would teach as they walked along and the disciples or the people that were uh, in the uh, group following him would, uh, would uh, then be taught. And this is where we get this idea 
of following Jesus or following a prophet uh, or following John the Baptist. It was that they were walking along with the teacher uh, or Jesus to, to learn from him. And they said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? And Jesus replied, come and you will see. So there we get the title of the lesson, Come and See. So they went and saw where he was staying and spent the day with him. It was about the 10th hour, so this would be about 4 o'clock as far as the, the Jewish uh, sense of time was concerned. And then in verse uh, 40, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard that John, what John said and who had followed Jesus. And we don't know who the other one was, but, uh, but this is the first proclamation of uh, Jesus as the uh, Jews' Messiah. And this is typically what what Andrew does. He he gets people. Uh, he asks them to follow. It was about the tenth hour. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what Jesus had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. So Andrew was the proclaimer of good news. Andrew sought people and brought them to Jesus. Come and see, he said. And so he brought his, his uh, brother to see Jesus, and Jesus looked at him and said, and we read about this in uh, that 42nd verse, Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which then, when translated, is Peter. The Greek name would be Petros, also Peter. So why the name change? Well, at this point in, in Israel's history, when a, a name was, was changed, it was to reflect a change in status or to uh, change a role that was going to be played. And obviously Peter uh, was not the rock at this point. He was all over the, the map. He would be uh, a devout follower of Jesus one time and he would deny him the next minute. So Jesus saw in him a role that Peter and the other followers of Jesus had had not seen and didn't know, but but Jesus knew Peter and he knew the character of Peter and what his potential was uh, more than, than Peter did himself. Now all of this took place in Judea. Uh, this is when Jesus uh, began his ministry and it says in verse 43, the next day Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Now a couple of things of interest. One is uh, that, that, as I said, their ministry was in Judea at this point. They were going to Galilee and, and much of, of the ministry of Jesus was in the area of Galilee around the, the Sea of Galilee. And when Jesus called people, uh, as he did Philip, and he said, follow me, it was not at that point to be a disciple, although Philip and Andrew 
uh, ended up being disciples. And, and so we see here as we uh, finish out this uh, section of Scripture that, that we are pulling together the first four disciples that ministered along with Jesus. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. And so here's the connection between uh, these men. Uh, Bethsaida was up in the northeast corner of the Sea of Galilee. Capernaum was on the, the other side. And so this was an area that that had been ministered, uh, that they ministered to much of their time. Uh, Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law. We have found him, about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So the other gospels identify uh, Nathaniel as Bartholomew, and of course, as you as you look at the circumstances of the call, uh, Bartholomew and Nathaniel uh, were the same person. So here we have all four of these first uh, disciples that Jesus had called, and Nathaniel replied, can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked. This was a small, insignificant village. Uh, you know, what can come out of that? You know, certainly not. And Philip says, come and see. And I find that very interesting. We as we follow Jesus and as we are called to be witnesses to the world, uh, we often fret about what we're going to say. How are we going to share our faith? And what are we going to say to people that we want to get them interested in being a disciple of Jesus? And, and Philip said very simply, come and see. Come and see. See for yourself uh, this man, Jesus, that came into the world to save man from their sins, to provide an opportunity for salvation. Come and see, said Philip. Didn't argue, didn't debate. Not much is gained in that approach usually. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. So that meant that, that Nathaniel did more than just punch the ticket. He didn't just go to church and go home. He didn't uh, do any uh, thing more than devote his life to Jesus. He was the true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. He followed God and obeyed the commandments. He didn't just go uh, punch his ticket and leave. Well, Nathaniel, of course, asked, well, how do you know me? It was not sarcasm. It, it was a request for an honest answer, an honest inquiry. Uh, how do you know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Could be that, that he was uh, in the shade of the fig tree uh, listening to a rabbi teach. He, he was there uh, perhaps studying, just uh, enjoying the shade perhaps. But then... Nathaniel declared, just based on this, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Now this is pretty astounding, having just heard 
what Jesus said. I saw you while you were still under the fig tree. That was all that was communicated. But, but Nathaniel declared rabbi, which would essentially place him under uh, Jesus as a teacher, under his control, uh, the Son of God. That would, that would be blasphemy if it were not true. And you are the king of Israel, treason. Uh, they had a king. So Nathaniel was very forthright in his confession of faith. Pretty astounding. And in verse 50, Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. In other words, it's not what I said, it's what I, in terms of who I am, but the fact that I saw you under the fig tree, you believe. He said, but you will see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth. So here's an important affirmation. I tell you the truth, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Now, of course, this is a, li a link to uh, Jacob's dream, uh, his experience at Bethel, where we see the story of, of Jacob's ladder with people coming down from heaven and ascending. And we see this, this finality, if you will, in this first chapter where, where much of Jesus' power is being revealed and, and you're seeing the disciples uh, learn about calling people and we see the activities of Nathaniel and, and in fact uh, in the story of the 5,000 fish, the uh, people that, that uh, were fed by the the bread and the fish that the young boy had. Who found the young boy? It was Nathaniel. So without that event in Nathaniel's life, in the life of Jesus, where would the feeding of the 5,000 have been? Where would that story have gone? What a wonderful introduction to Jesus' presence with man to provide salvation for all who believe and all who followed him. Let's pray together. Uh, Father, I just thank you for this message and John's gospel. I thank you for the blessings it brings, the, the learning it brings. Uh, Father, I thank you for this season of year that we prepare during this a time of Advent where we will look to celebrate your birth. Uh, Father, I pray for those that are traveling, for those that are ill, recovering from surgery. I just pray, Father, for our church and its leadership as, as the a season progresses. Father, bless them, use them to your glory and honor. Uh, Father, I pray that is as individuals, as we, as we walk, that we will be followers of you, that we will share the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we pray all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. God bless you.